knowing how SQL works is really important for C-sharp developers, especially if you're using Entity Framework. In this 10-minute training video, I'm going to show you why the defaults for string fields absolutely must be changed when using Entity Framework. Now, for most of my training, I work to give you an in-depth look at a technology, but sometimes you just need to get the quick answer to the question of, how do I do this? That's why I created this 10-minute training series. So this can be a little bit different. We're going to spend all of our time in SSMS, not in C Sharp, not in Visual Studio. The reason why is because this is where you see the difference. So if you are using Entity Framework or even if you're using Dapper or anything else to access your SQL database, you need to understand how SQL works. And you need to understand how to diagnose SQL issues, otherwise, you're going to think your app is slow when it's really your database is slow. And it's not because SQL is bad or slow. It's because you wrote slow code. So let's look real quick at one issue. Now, this is not a I hate it's entity framework. It's not. Entity framework is a very powerful tool, can do a lot of great things. But in the hands of a person who doesn't understand SQL, it can be a really bad thing. So by default, when you create a model and say, hey, I want to have a first name and a last name and an ID column for a table, and you say Entity Framework, create that table. Here's what it creates. So we have an ID with an, in this case, an integer. It's an auto incrementing integer. We have a first name with an nvar char max and a last name with an nvar char max. Now this maps over to a string inside of C Sharp. Now, why is it do max? Because it doesn't know how big that first name or last name are going to be. And so it just creates max because that will work. Now, could it guess? Yeah, it could, but it's gonna get it wrong. So what it does instead is just say, hey, we're gonna do max. Now, what I've done is I have created another table. So this is the users to the max. We also have another table called users which has the same structure. No, it's the same structure. The difference is I said nvarchar 50. So the first name can only be 50 characters long. The last name can only be 50 characters long. It really doesn't matter how big that, that length is. It's different than max, okay? So what I've done is I have put 1 million rows into both users and users to the max, and those rows are identical. So I create a, a little um, tool, actually use Dapper for that. I'll pull that up here where I just said, hey, take these first names, these last names, and I want you to do an insert into both with the same data. And I did it for a million rows, okay? Real quick and dirty, something to put a million records into SQL just so we have something to play with. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run two different queries here. We're gonna say select star from DBO users, order by last name, and select star from DBO dot user to the max, order by last name. That's all I'm doing. It's the same query twice, but one's going to the user table, one's going to the user to the max table. I am going to come up here and notice right up here, there is this button I'm gonna turn on that says include actual execution plan. What this is going to do is tell me afterwards what it did for each of these queries. And the really cool thing is, let's turn it on. So now it's on. The really cool thing is it will give me a comparison. This is the big deal, is the comparison between the two queries. Because what it's going to tell us is which one is more efficient or are they the same? This is a great way to debug your queries in SQL and figure out how to make one more efficient based on your specific data. So when you're looking at, at SQL and, and the efficiencies, don't look at time necessarily. Because while yes, you want things to be faster, it'd be comparing it to itself. That's the only way you look at time. Because otherwise, my SQL server might run slower than yours or might run faster than yours. And so that's not gonna be a good comparison. What you wanna compare to is either itself, as in it got faster, or compare it to a different query on the same server that does the same thing in a different way. So in this case, we're going to look at these two select statements. So I'm going to execute these. There's the first one's already done. Notice it says executing down here at the bottom. We're going to wait for this to co complete executing. Now you already might notice the second one's taking a bit longer. 
but I want to show you the execution plans when we're done to show you exactly why the max values are a problem. Remember, it's the exact same data, exact same. So we have the same number of John Andersons and Jane Andersons and all the rest. Let's look at the execution plan. And what we're going to do is we're going to zoom in here on the execution plans. I want to point out a few things right away. When you're comparing two queries that do the exact same result, you want to look at the query cost relative to the batch. This one is 2% and this one is 98%, which means that the first one is 50 times faster than the second one as far as, co or as, far as cost. How much did it cost? The first one is 1 50th of the cost of the second one. Now, we can also look at the various steps. For example, the cluster index, I believe it's a scan here, is 0.013 seconds versus 0.022 seconds. Very close to the same. The sort here is 0.107 seconds, and this one is 0.339 seconds. Well, it's three times as slow for the second one, but we're talking about sub one second differences on my machine. Again, we're not looking at how long it takes overall because your machine might be faster or slower. We're looking at comparing the two. So now we're starting to see a difference, but here's the big one. 0.403 seconds versus 22.172 seconds. That's a huge difference. So the second one took 22 seconds in this, in this step compared to 0.4 seconds for the other one. Now, there's even one more thing I want to point out, and that's going to take us zooming back out and hovering over this select on the first one. And we'll notice right here, memory grant of 340 megabytes. And then you hover over here, we'll see a memory grant of 641 megabytes. And that's kind of deceptive because I've already run this query once. It's got some caching. It knows what the, what the table is like. And so even with all of that, we have a doubling of the amount of size and memory it took. But let's change this to be um, first name. I believe I have not run this yet on first name. We'll see. So depending on if your query is in the cache, if it knows about it, and many other factors, we might get a much different number even than this. So already we saw double the memory. We saw that it took 50 times as long. So it's already pointing out to us that NVAR char 50 versus NVAR char max is a big deal difference. And don't forget, it's the exact same data. So now if we, um, I've already run this one as well. Uh, nope, I have not. Okay, so this one took a memory grant of 357 megabytes. Okay, that's a lot, but we're talking about a million records. So let's look at the memory grant of this one. 8.5 gigabytes of memory. Okay, now it had to allocate that because it did not know what was in the max columns. Once it knows, it'll figure, oh, I can, I can shrink that down, at least for now. But that takes running the query. The queries took the same amount of time, roughly. So again, 22 seconds versus 0.388. So for this parallelism step. So with these two different, with these two queries, they still have a 2% versus 98%, but we've got a lot more memory usage as well, depending on if the query's in the plan right now or not. So why is this happening? Well, it's because of the fact that the way that max is stored on disk, max can be billions of characters. And so it won't always fit on a row. And so it has to be stored on disk and a pointer to it. That also means you cannot put the first name or last name column into as an index. You can't say index on last name or index on first name if it's a max column. You can if it's a specified length. So lots of reasons why you don't want NVAR char max. So in your entity framework queries, make sure you specify the size of all strings. That's the 
big, big performance tip right there. Specify the length of your strings. Okay. Thanks for watching. And as always, I am Tim Corey.